Greetings, fellow Earth explorers, and welcome to the scientific adventures of Beard Man. I hope you're ready for a thrilling journey into the forces that sculpt our planet's dramatic landscapes. We will analyze both the constructive and destructive processes in terms of their spatial and temporal scales. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not that complicated. Spatial scale refers to how big something is, the physical size of the area affected, while the temporal scale simply refers to the time it takes to happen. One of the biggest factors in shaping the surface of the Earth is plate tectonics. Imagine Earth's outer layer like a cracked eggshell made up of massive pieces called tectonic plates. These plates are constantly moving, bumping into each other, pulling apart, sliding past each other. And where they meet, that's where the action happens. These meeting points are called plate boundaries. And there are three main types. Each type creates its own set of geological structures. The first type is convergent boundaries, where the plates collide head on. If two continental plates collide, this causes mountains to arise in a process called orogeny, like the Himalayas or the ancient Appalachians. For each feature, you will see a table with its spatial scale and its temporal scale. For example, mountain ranges formed through orogeny spatially average hundreds of thousands of square miles of Earth's surface. Temporally, they take around 100 million years to form. These will all be estimates of averages in order to help you compare the size and formation times of each feature. Now, let's get back to those convergent boundaries. When an oceanic plate is involved, the oceanic plate dives under the other plate, creating deep ocean trenches that trigger volcanic eruptions. As the subducting crust is pushed down into the mantle, it drags the overriding plate down a little. This causes deep ocean trenches and simultaneously stores elastic potential energy in the overriding plate. When this energy is released, we get an earthquake. I'll explain earthquakes with more detail in a couple minutes. Since the earthquake is restoring the ocean floor to its position, this moves all the water on top of it as well. The huge wave created by the ocean floor shifting back into position is called a tsunami. Then, as the subducting crust enters the mantle, it melts. Since it is filled with water, since it's oceanic crust, the water turns to steam and expands and rises with the liquid rock, causing volcanoes. If the oceanic crust is subducting under continental crust, we get a volcanic mountain range, like the Cascade Mountains in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. However, if the oceanic crust is subducting under other oceanic crust, the volcanoes will be underwater. As the underwater volcanoes build height, it becomes a seamount. Once it reaches the surface of the water, it is reclassified as a volcanic island. Since the volcanic islands form just past the plate boundary, they often appear in curved lines known as volcanic arcs. The second type of plate boundary is divergent boundaries, where plates move away from each other. Molten rock from deep inside Earth rises to fill the gap, creating new crust. This often happens under the ocean and we call it seafloor spreading. It forms mid-ocean ridges where the new lava piles up. For more information about seafloor spreading, check out this video. When it happens on land, it stretches the land, thinning the crust and creating rift valleys, like we see in the massive 4,000 mile long rift valley in East Africa. Unlike normal valleys that are carved by water or ice flowing down them, these form by the bottom of them seemingly dropping out of them. This leaves them with fairly flat floors, unlike river-carved valleys, which are V-shaped. They also have steep walls. 
The walls of the Rift Valley in Eastern Africa are sometimes as high as 2,700 meters or 9,000 feet. We also recently looked at the mid-continent Rift Valley formed in North America in this video. The third type of plate boundary is transform boundaries, where plates slide horizontally past each other. This can cause earthquakes, like those along the San Andreas Fault in California. When plate boundaries try to slide past each other, there is tremendous friction between them. This causes them to catch and stick for thousands of years. When this happens, the rest of the plate continues to move, but the edges are bent backwards, like a hiker pushing a branch out of the way. This stores elastic potential energy in the plate boundary because they have changed their shape and they want to return to their original shape. When the forces caused by this elastic potential energy exceed the force holding the plate in place, it happens suddenly, like a branch swinging back to hit somebody. This sudden swing of each side of the plate boundary creates an earthquake. This creates places where we can see the features of the surface of the crust have been shifted or become offset. Once the rock is broken and shifted, we call that a fault. Now that we know about plate boundaries and how they contribute to the incredible variety of features on the Earth's surface, let's look at one more way that the Earth's mantle impacts the surface of the Earth. The Earth's mantle can have hot spots where magma rises, often called magma plumes, and then raise large sections of the Earth by pushing from underneath. This is one way that plateaus can be formed. Hotspots are perhaps most famous for creating the Hawaiian Islands. Plateaus can also be formed anywhere you have tectonic lift, such as hotspots or at convergent boundaries. It's important to remember that the appearance of land features and seafloor features is a result of both constructive and destructive forces working together over vast periods. Some of those destructive mechanics are weathering, mast wasting, and coastal erosion, which break down landforms. Weathering is the process of breaking apart rocks. This can be caused by things such as wind, flowing water, expansion of forming ice, or moving ice, like glaciers, growing roots or other living matter, and animals. This can eventually wear down mountain ranges like the Himalayas, or carve immense canyons, like the Grand Canyon. Mass wasting, on the other hand, is much quicker. Mass wasting refers to gravity pulling rock and soil down a slope. This would include things like avalanches, rock slides, and mudslides, which happen very quickly. Although it can also happen more slowly in a process called creep. Creep is the slow shifting of dirt and rock under the pull of gravity toward the bottom of a slope. This can result in tilted trees, poles, or buildings. Finally, we have coastal erosion, which involves waves battering against the shore, carrying away the weathered sediment. This can shrink beaches or wear away cliffs. We see this quite spectacularly at places like the White Cliffs of Dover, on the southeastern coast of England. So there you have it, a glimpse into the amazing world of Earth's internal and surface processes. We can see that there are vast differences in the spatial and temporal scales between the different forces that shape our planet. Thanks for joining me as we explored how our planet's surface is constantly being shaped and reshaped. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more exciting explorations into the world of science. Keep those beards bushy and those minds curious. We'll catch you the next time on the scientific adventures of Beard Man.